Hey everybody, welcome to part two of the DIY home glycol build. As previously mentioned, this is the uh, FTSS uh, kit that comes with the pump and you saw in video in the part one of the video. And then if, you, um, if you're getting it for the seven gallon fermenter, it, it, they send you with a new lid that has the holes already made, although I will not be using that and I'll show you why. Um, but I will probably use the seal. It's nice and clean and brand new. <laughs> Second part of the kit is this, which I believe it's the same for either the seven gallon fermenter or the 14 gallon fermenter, this coil that it comes with, that of course would fit in these pre-drilled holes here. But uh, I'm going to drill holes in the lid of the one that I have because I, I have my lid set up for pressurized transfers and a little bit of pressure um, fermenting, but it's nothing. It's just to keep a positive pressure. And also it comes with a thermal well um, that you can screw on uh, to this hole here. Let me set this down. So this, this hole here is for the thermal well, and of course this would be for the, the bung so that you could uh, put your airlock on, but I don't, I don't utilize this. Uh, I have two brew buckets and um, the, the seven gallon variety, and then I have the Blickman 14.5 gallon conical fermenter, which I use for double batches. Um, uh, this controller comes with it. Uh, it's the SS Brew Tech controller, which I will use for either system. Um, the way I'm setting mine up though, is uh, I'm only going to do one at a time. I'm, I'm probably never going to have the glycol system trying to run two fermenters at the same time. Now, if I wanted to do two at a time, I'd have to get another controller with a you know, with the thermal well, which it comes with a thermal well and a thermal probe, and I would have to install another pump in in the um, glycol tank and another disconnect. So, I mean, I don't even know if this is going to be sufficient enough to maintain the temperatures here in Florida in the middle of summer. Well, let's get started. I'm putting a switch for the fan here. I just haven't tightened it down. Um, switch for the fan, uh, which is going to turn the power on to the fan system, uh, which is this 110 volt AC to 5 volts DC to power these fans. So this goes on to the FTSS uh, controller, which is the 12 volts output to the pump that's sitting in here. So what I did is I just made a connector so that I can quickly plug it in to here, like this. And then I have enough length to set the conical anywhere up here or when this is all cleaned up. So that's how I did this. All right, so inside here, on the opposite side of that bulkhead connector, is this kind of connector here, which is going to marry up with this one, which is the pump. Forgive me for all the camera movement. Uh, so, you know, the wiring is not complicated. There's, I'm just setting it up so it's, it's all in quick disconnects. So, so what I'm going to do, because I want disconnects everywhere, is I'm going to connect this and on the opposite side, Jesus. Connect it like this and use this as a bulkhead, sort of bulkhead connector. So I'll be going through here. Okay, <clears throat> these quick disconnect for the hoses, uh, they're plastic. I couldn't find any stainless that I liked, so I used brass. I I'm not concern really because I'm just running glycol but my point is here is um, because it's plastic it I've used these with stainless this this plastic with stainless and brass in the past and they leak so you have to put threader tape on there and quite a bit of it actually even though they're both national pipe thread oh, that's dumb oh well going against <laughs> anyway I'll put a couple of uh, revolutions of uh, Teflon tape on here just because I hate leaks 
I despise them and I hate taking things apart that I've put together to fix a leak even more. It's the best I could come up with with a bulkhead union, union but that's going to go between the, um, the 2x6 that I've built up here and then I'm just going to um, on the back side, I'm just going to cut away a little bit of the styrofoam so that I can quick disconnect if I need to. And then I'm going to epoxy these in. <laughs> I decided that's what I'm going to do. It's the easiest thing to do. So I'll continue making these up and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. The tilt shows we're at 91 degrees. There it is sitting in there. It says uh, five and a half gallons. That's about right. It's got the nice neoprene cover on there that came with the FTSS kit. I purchased just the cooling one. Uh, pro tip, put the boot on the, put the neoprene on before you fill it with water. That was a chore. <laughs> All right, so we thread the thermocouple down in there and see if it matches what the tilt is saying once it stabilizes. Let's get it all the way down in there. Okay, I hear, I hear it hit the base. Let's see if we can get that in the shot. I hope we can. The other thing I want to do is I want to get the neoprene uh, covers. I'm going to cover these lines and insulate them uh, to help help with the uh, you know thermal loss possibly picked up in transit in this temperature. And then you should be able to see the glycol start to flow as soon as I turn it on. All right, there it goes. That says it's about 91 degrees. And what did this say? Oh, 91 degrees, okay. So they're pretty much the same, but uh, no change in the temperature as of yet. And I wouldn't expect it to, but these lines are s super cool. Even the one coming back is cool. So it's uh, not gonna overload the system, perhaps. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. So it is now, 1226 we're at 91 degrees we'll see what happens what I probably should do is check the thermometer put a thermometer in the glycol well let's see where we're at there because I hadn't cooled it all the way down yet uh, so let's do that so that I can um, have a point of reference okay so I put a hold on it. I don't know if you can see that. It's 43 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not quite 
all the way down. It was set for 33 on the 33 or 34 on the STC 1000. Um, and we hadn't quite reached that point yet, but I figured I'd go ahead and start now and see what happens, even without an insulator on these lines. And uh, we're down, we're down a whole degree, almost two. And two minutes. <laughs> I just wanted to make a note. How quickly that's down. I um, didn't pay attention. It's 12:50 now, and it stopped. It went down to 68. I think this is going to be behind. Yeah, 72, but it's catching up. So that's pretty cool. I am pretty satisfied. Although these lines are sweating. So I think the insulating of the lines is in order. <clears throat> I wanted to show you that getting that fermenter down to 69 degrees from 91 dropped uh, the tank. This is the tank temperature, 52 now. It's still holding and it's now 1057. It's only gone up 0.2. So I think maintaining it is actually going to be pretty good. Where are we at? See, so we're holding at 68.5. I am I'm pretty confident we'll be able to hold, especially if we started at 34. The question is, is it going to work for the, um, the Blickman 14 gallon fermenter? So that's going to be in another video. Uh, that will be part three. So we'll conclude part one in a probably about 12 hours I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a little more and see how we're doing and see if we continue to hold uh, but so far it's looking promising cheers so far I'm pretty happy about it uh, the next step is to actually see which thermometer is a little off and the tilt says it's 69 so that took a while for the tilt to catch up and that says 68 so now I'm gonna stick a thermometer in there and see what the third thermometer says. I suspect it's the tilt. All right. This thermometer is getting old, uh, but it's still pretty accurate. It says it's 67.8. Sixty-seven point eight. This says sixty-eight point three. This says sixty-nine. I had to shut the garage door. It's raining like crazy out there. All right, so I matched them up. As you can see, they're sixty-eight point five. This one only has one uh, decimal, not even one decimal, whole number. Um, but we'll we'll call that good. Half a degree either way is not going to concern me too much. So I'm very happy that the temperature is on this is very accurate compared to the known good thermometer I have. Um, but that all three were within, well, my known good thermometer and this were within a half a degree. So I'll call that good. Don't you just love when you're doing videos and they just stop and you don't know it until you're video editing and you realize you don't have an ending. So this is the ending. Uh, this is the end of part two of the uh, DIY glycol build. And um, for the 7.5 gallons, it's a success. Yeah, pretty psyched. It's, uh, it's working really, really well. So um, stay tuned for part three, which is the 14.5 gallon. Does it work or does it not work? And the conversion of that. Stay tuned for that video next, part three. Cheers. Mm -hmm.